Today, we're going to be taking a deeper dive into the Chris Titus Wind Utility Tool and the Micro Wind feature. Now, this part of the utility is super feature rich, but we're going to use basically a lot of defaults. And what those defaults are going to be doing is taking a Windows 11 image. We're going to be stripping out the telemetry and tracking. It's going to allow us to set up a local account. Also, remove the requirement for internet so we can just install that without internet being required. And lastly, it's going to debloat a lot of those apps that get tried to install with the base image. Now, there are a lot more features with this utility as well, but a lot of them are focused more on the business related side where we can upload drivers, do a lot of weird customizable tweaks so that it looks exactly how like a business would want each and every desktop to be. And we don't really need that. This is going to be more for home use. So without further ado, let's just jump right in. Now I'm gonna head over to the GitHub Chris Titus Win Utility, and I'll have all these links in the description down below, but we'll just simply scroll down. We're gonna see that we need to right click on the PowerShell and run it as admin, and then we need to launch this command. So let's go ahead and do that. With PowerShell open, we'll just simply right click to add that copied link over and hit enter. Now this should take a couple of seconds to bring down his utility and kind of open it up. If you have a faster computer like I do, it's almost instantaneous. Now I've done this on VMs and such, and it can take maybe 30 seconds or so. So don't fear if it doesn't open just instantly. Now we're gonna head over to the micro wind feature here. Now we're gonna ignore the rest of these because we're gonna be installing this and then we're gonna be opening up this utility again and running some of the tweaks like we've done previously. But I wanna just do an all encompassing video of this tool. Now, by default, this box up here should be checked. That's fine. It's going to ask us a scratch directory settings optional. We can just ignore that for now. And we can either select our own ISO. Now, you can go to Microsoft. I'll have the link down below to download it manually. But we can also get the newest ISO automatically. Now, if you click the 24H2, sometimes there are different options. But right now, the only option you can download from Microsoft right now is the 24H2. So we'll just simply click that we can hit get ISO. Now a new box is gonna pop up. It's gonna ask us where we want to actually download this file into. Now I'm gonna put it on my network drive here, but we'll just throw that in there and just hit next. And it's gonna go ahead and go out to the internet and download that ISO for us. Now this probably will take a decent amount of time depending on your internet speeds and all that good stuff. We do know that it's actually doing something. You can have the PowerShell window over here off to the left. We'll just kind of minimize that a little bit it's going to lag just a bit, but we can see there is a progress bar and it's just going to slowly fill up as it progresses with the download. Now you're probably looking at a maybe I would say two to 10 minute download off of this. It is a five gig file, so it isn't anything small. So just be aware of that. Now you may get this error when you either try to use your own file or even just downloading it the way I'm doing it. Now it's gonna say this exe is not found and it'll go ahead and attempt to do a download from GitHub and it may take a long time. So I'm just gonna, simply gonna hit okay and it should continue to download from the GitHub and get that file that it needs. After that completes the download, you're gonna see that it's gonna finding suitable pro edition, all this good stuff. It's still saying that it's doing some stuff in the background. So we're gonna continue to let it sit and do its thing. There is a reason why it does say that it it does take a while to do all of this stuff i would say you're probably looking at 10 20 minutes just to get the iso built but the install itself for windows is actually very quick now once it's done you're going to see the green done sign and you're going to see proceed with the customization now that's perfect we have our configure window iso over here and we can choose our windows SKU. so if you don't have Windows 11 Pro, you can actually click the button here and we can change it to whatever license structure you actually have. So if you guys only have Windows 11 Home license, you can simply just click that and hit OK. But we're going to be using the Windows 11 Pro because that's currently what I have a license for. Now moving on here, we're going to see that you can eject drivers. We can include vert IO drivers, import drivers from current system. Now these are all great things. Um, but a lot of times it might not be what you need unless you're doing something like I've done in the past where I've taken a Windows 11 machine as my personal driver and I'm like, you know, I've had this Windows installed for a long time. I've uninstalled, reinstalled a lot of different programs in the past. Maybe I just want a fresh build, but I don't want to go out there and get all the weird drivers that I've gotten in the past. So you can actually just check this box and it'll pull the drivers from this machine while it creates the actual new ISO, which is perfect. It makes a lot less headache of when you're trying to set up a new system, especially if it's gonna be on the same machine. Now, 
We're going to be doing this on a brand new machine, so we don't need to really worry about that. And we can include the vert IO drivers as well. So if you're doing something like the Proxmox virtual machines or anything like that, I've done that in the past and this makes it super easy. You don't have to go find those files. It just kind of includes it for you. So it's perfect there. Now moving on, copy to Ventoy. You don't really need to do that either. The next part that you probably will need is a custom user. Now this will allow you to make that a local user account. So we will do divine tech here. And you can put a password if you like. You can leave it blank if you want as well. I'm just gonna put a password, just kind of a generic password that I use for some stuff. And then lastly, you're gonna see a couple different things. We can do tweaks, leave empty for default settings. But if you want the Windows platform binary table, the advanced tweaks, um, anti-theft software, and weird things like that, you can go through here and just kind of read each one of these descriptions. Honestly, for most of you guys, you're probably not gonna even need to do this, but we can go ahead and hit start the process, which will start our image. Now, when we hit start the process, there's gonna be a window that pops up and it's gonna ask you, where do you wanna save all this, this new ISO basically? So what do we wanna label this ISO? I am just gonna say micro win um, 2025. Uh, and then since this is a 24 H2 build, so I just do wanna label that. And then even if you want, you could do Windows 11 Pro, something like that as well. Feel free to name it whatever you like. It's just, this keeps me on track and realize what ones that I've built in the past and maybe I can delete older ones as I continue to build them in the future. After that, we're gonna hit save and then you're gonna see it's gonna start running in the background. Now we're just gonna let this do its thing. In the past, this has taken about five to 10 minutes on a really, really fast system. So your mileage may vary. So we'll just let this continue and finish up. All right, so there we go. We have the pop-up saying the it is done with the ISO image and it's telling us where it's located. So that's perfect. That's all we needed to know. We'll hit okay. And now we have our image. Now, wherever you downloaded this image or put it, we can close out of all this, all these utilities here. And what we're gonna do is actually take that ISO. Now, if you don't already know how to use Rufus, I have a couple different videos on Windows 11 installs. Feel free to use those to actually use that to build out a bootable USB if you're gonna be doing it that way. Now, I'm gonna be showing this in a VM situation here. We are going to make a VM with four cores and eight gigs of RAM, and then we'll see how actual fast this is to install, which should be a little bit interesting because I've seen some other reports saying that this can take as little as five minutes to install Windows 11. Now I've had some success in the past with Windows 10 in installing it insanely fast. So I'm sure with this utility, stripping out a lot of the nonsense that Windows wants to put into it, we could probably get a very quick install. So I'm gonna go ahead and set that up here and then we'll start a stopwatch here and see how fast it can actually install. All right, so we have our stopwatch in the top right corner. We're gonna start going through this setup and see actually how fast this actually makes a Windows 11 install. Again, this is a virtual machine with four cores and eight gigs of RAM. So we'll hit start and continue right on. Now we're just gonna hit yes, yes, we want to install, include, everything needs to be deleted. I don't have a product key right now, so it's fine. I will put that in later. We accept our ULA. We're gonna be searching for some disks. Now this might take a little bit longer. I'm going to delete because this is all just a previous machine that I had. Now I'm deleting everything on this machine because this was a previous machine that I used and then we're just going to take it back to an unallocated space. All you have to do is to delete those partitions and then hit install. It makes all that stuff for you, which is like really awesome. It takes a lot of the headache out of what partitions you actually need to make. And just like that, we're already installing Windows 11. We are at the almost one minute mark. So I'm gonna let this continue and we'll see how quickly it can do this. All right, so we're at the four minute mark here and it's still installing. It did do a restart here, so we'll see how quickly it'll actually finish up on this last little bit. And we're two seconds away from the five minute mark. So we'll see if it finishes up in actual five minutes here. I don't know if we'll hit the, the mark. It is really close. I, I don't think there's really much left of the install. We can see that it's doing some of the PowerShell commands here. It's probably gonna reboot one more time and then boot into Windows, I believe. 
And just like that, we are in at six minutes and 30 seconds. Now it's going to ask me what I really want my resolution to be. We're going to do 1080p. We're going to swap this over here. So after six minutes, just a little bit slightly over six minutes and I say 20 seconds, we'll undo this stopwatch. Again, this machine is not running anything special. It's not running eight cores. It's not running 12 cores, 16 gigs of RAM or anything like that. Like I said, it's four cores, eight gigs of RAM, which is crazy that we can get it down to six minutes for an install. I do have that previous video where I did a basic Windows 11 install with just generic setup. And what did it take almost an hour just to get Windows 11 installed, which is insane. All right, so here we are at our desktop. Once again, we can hit the start menu. We can see everything is kind of gone. It's kind of a clean slate. There is one install WhatsApp recommendation. I don't know why, maybe it is something new that his script doesn't actually take out just yet. So we're just gonna right click remove from list. And we have a pretty clean slate here, guys. We can go in and we can actually, now we're gonna go ahead and run the PowerShell again as admin. I'm gonna hit yes here, and then we're going to run the Chris Titus Win Utility once more. We're just gonna do a default setup. So we do IRM quotes, it's gonna be HTTPS colon colon uh, slash last Chris Titus.com win. And then we do a bar IE. Oh man, I just typo that. We'll just do IEX. That should bring it down here on this system here and like I said we'll open up the task manager we'll see what we're running we are running a four core processor eight gigs of RAM so it's really not bad um, we can see that we have we do have 102 processes running 31 in the background and two apps which is fine we're going to run just some default tweaks here I'm going to do the standard tweaks I'm not going to really do anything else uh, we'll hit run tweaks I will move that over here so you guys can see it kind of do its thing in the background. Now in the past, we've done a little bit more extensive guide and going to, through each and every one of these options. I'm just trying to do a base level install here with just some easy tweaks to see where we can get a baseline at on a very generic system. You will notice that the image did not allow Copilot to get installed or anything like that. Um, lastly here, we'll just go under the updates and we will use default settings just to make sure all that stuff is set the way we want it. Stock settings loaded. It says it wants us to reboot the computer. I'm just going to hit okay for now. Now we can do things like install the PowerShell profile. We can go into the power plans, add those. If we really need to, we can add or activate ultimate performance profile. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. Things like show hidden files, show file extensions, the search button in the task bar. So if you do this and turn it on, it'll get rid of the actual like bubble of the search menu and put the icon. But if you hit it one more time, it actually removes it, which is super interesting. Now we can also apply the dark theme for Windows here as well without having to actually activate Windows. So sometimes it does make you activate Windows, but for some reason through this utility, since it's going through the registry itself, we can actually apply the dark theme without having to worry about registering the Windows 11. And then lastly, we can go under the DNS. If we want to do something like Cloudflare or anything like that, we can hit run tweaks and get that installed as well. Um, it does sometimes speed up your internet depending on what kind of setup you have. Uh, I tend to do it on some of my systems. It's just kind of nice. There are plenty of options in here that you can choose from. You can do like some of the malware adult stuff where it'll block any kind of like adult content or anything like that. So if you have kids that use a computer, this is kind of a cheeky way to kind of keep them from going to those sites or anything like that. Now, once it's finished, we'll see tweaks are finished. Perfect. That's all there really is to it. Now you can go ahead and set up Windows 11 any way you like. Now, this is a super cool tool. I do like MicroWin. It is very, very handy. Rufus, like I said, does something similar, but I don't think the install is quite as quick as it is with this utility. And it does strip out a lot of the junk software. I did, Like I said, we did see one item here, and that could be just because something Windows just updated here recently. Um, and maybe his utility isn't actually looking for it just yet. So it probably will in the future. Now, if you like this video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.